Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In today's video, we are going to talk about OpenWRT Firewall. If you have been working with Linux before, you should know about IP tables and Firewall D. They are the firewall management application and they use firewall zone to configure the rules and the traffic. So the same for OpenWRT. When we first install OpenWRT, we will have two default firewall zone, which is the one firewall zone and the LAN firewall zone. Let me show you how it looks like on OpenWRT. So if you go to network interfaces, you will see we have some of the interface. And in this case, the one firewall, in this case, the one interface have a red color on top of it. And the 3G interface had a red color on top of it as well. And right here we have a description that part of the zone one. So this is the one firewall zone. And right here, this is our LAN interface and this is a part of zone LAN or the LAN firewall zone. And you can verify this by go to network and firewall. In the firewall UI, we have some of the basics configuration like the general setting, the port forwards, the traffic rules and the NAT rules and the custom rules. So this is where we can create or add or delete our zones. Let's go back to the diagram and you can see this is the zone. So what are the differences between the port forwarding and traffic rules? So with traffic rules, you can configure how the routers handle the package. For one zone, for LAN zone, so you can accept or you can reject or you can do whatever you want with the package and no matter what it come from and no matter zone it is however with port forwarding we already enable the accept of the package on one zone and then it will be forward to another zone so this is the difference so on port forwarding we accept and forward but on the traffic rules you can create the rules to maybe recheck the packet when it first come to the one zone Right, so this is the main difference. In this example, we will open port 80 for one of our LAN device. Uh, this is one of the PC and it is running HTTP server on port 80. And we want to open the port for that so people from the internet can accept the website. All right, so this is what we're going to do with the port forwarding. And let's just do it. Let me just show you. This is my device, which is the ORNP plus 2E, and it is having an IP address of 192.168.a.11a, and it is on DHCP mode. We have the IP address of the device. Next, we need to reserve the DHCP on our OpenWRT router. All right, so let's go to OpenWRT network. DHCP and DNS and go to the static leases. So right here we have a bunch of uh, leases and we don't care about it and I will hide it of course. So we click on the add button and then on the host name you can give a host name. So in this case the host name is RNP plus 2A or you can leave it blank for the MAC address. We can find the MAC address of the device right here or it will be on the network interfaces. So this is the MAC address of the device. At the same time, we will have our MAC address on our OpenWRT database. So when we click on the drop down button, we will see a list of MAC and IP address. So here it is a02.a1.fa.pc.30. something. So which is RNP plus 2 ELAN. And this is our MAC address, all right? So for the IPv4, you can select the current IP address, which is uh, 182.168.a.11a, or you can give it a new IP address or the one that you refer. So maybe 192.168.a.1.2.3. And after you're done, you can click enter. So you can, you can give it any of the IP address that you want as long as the IP address is in the same subnet with your LAN interface. Right, so 
I will go with 118 because I don't want to change. So let's go back. For the list time, you will configure how long the DHCPs are reserved. I want the DHCP reservation to be forever, so I will put zero. And the rest of this, we can leave it blank. So click save and then save and apply. We're done with the IP address reservations or the statically configurations. And now let's have a check before we open the port on firewall. So let's go to can you see me.org and check it. Right, so this is my public IP address. This is the one IP and this is the dynamic IP. So we don't care about that. Let's check port 80. The port is closed and I cannot see you, right? So let's go back here. Let's go to network and then firewall. So right here on the port forward section, we need to create a new rules. So if you come to this page the first time, everything will be blank and there is no port forward rules created. But in this case, I have created those rules before. So yep, you can just ignore about that. Let's add a new one. And then for the name, it will be HTTP or you can put any name for the protocol. The HTTP web server is running on port 80, um, protocol TCP. So we can just unselect UDP. For open VPN, they are running on UDP. So we need to select UDP. So this one is according to your application and you need to do a research about that. Right, so the sort firewall zone, it is coming from the one, of course, and the external port, it will be 80, all right? So the destination zone, it will be our LAN zone. So if you have multiple zones on your network, you need to select the correct one. For the internal IP address, we need to select the IP address of our LAN device. In this case, it is 192.168. 1.11a which is the RNP plus 2e or you can specify the IP address just right here by 192.168. a dot something but we have it right here and I will go with it so the internal port will be 80 as well so let's save it and that's it so as you can see we have the advanced setting where you can configure the source MAC addresses and the source IP addresses or something like that but this tutorial is only the basic thing so we can just skip it hit save and then save and apply all right so let's check it check port and success, I can see your service on port 80. So how to check this? Let's copy our one IP address and go to here and enter. So we can see our web server up and running on port 80, all right? I have disabled HTTP port forwarding rules, which is port 80, and let's see if the port is closed, all right? Let's check it. I cannot see you, so so set we are doing correctly, and let's try. Hmm. That rate, so everything is it, it working rate, right. and now let switch to the traffic rules. So with the traffic rules, you can configure the rules for your LAN and your one zone, and what you are going to do with the package. So in this case, let me give you an example. I will enable the SSH access to this OpenWRT router from the internet. So which mean packets coming from the internet to the one zone will be accepted and then routed to the router on port 22, right? So how do we do that? You can click on the add button and then on the name, we will put it something enable hash on the protocol. You need to divide so hash protocol. And it is running on TCP IP, so it should be TCP. 
right? We can deselect this one. On the short zone, it would be one zone. And on the short address, we can leave it blank or give it a short. So in this case, we don't know where it's coming from. So it should be blank. The short port, you can put it any or you can specify a port for it. So in this case, it will be 22. And for the destination zones, we have some of the options. Like we have the device, which is input. We have any zone, which is forward and LAN or one. So in this case, it will be input. And for the destination address, we can just leave it blank. If you have configured the rule for some of your LAN device, then you need to specify this one. But in this case, it is no need. And the destination port, it will be 22. And on the action, we have some of the options like drop, accept, and recheck. These are the basic actions. Drop meaning that it will just ignore the packet and do not do anything about the packet. So I don't receive you and that's it. On, and then accept, of course, it will accept the packet coming to the device or to the zone. And recheck, the same with drop. It will not accept the packet coming in, but it will send a message to the sender and saying that, hey, I am not accepting you anymore. Stop. Besides, we have other actions like dump track and apply a firewall Mac. And this is classification and they are very advanced. So even me have no idea what they are doing. I cannot share with you about this. So maybe you can do your own research. That's all about the basic configuration. So right here on the short port, you can change this port. Maybe you want that people from the internet, if they want to remote attach head to the router, they will need to input the port number up 2222 instead of 22, right? So for example, when we put like this, if you want to remote to your routers, then you need to put attach hash and then your one IP address and then the port number you need to put 2222 in order to reach the SSH service running on this OpenWRT router at port 22 and this is a really nice way to like avoid some of the spam or some bad people from hijacking your routers All right so let's put it 22 and here on the firewall traffic we have some of the time restriction so weak days or Monday so this is very helpful so let's say your children is playing game and it's connecting using a certain port and a certain address then you can create this rule to block the access to those servers so that they cannot play games anymore which is really nice functions so when we done click save and then save and apply after you commit the change, you can now remote your OpenWRT router from the internet. That is all about the basics network firewall on OpenWRT and I hope the video tutorial will be useful for you to set up your own rules for gaming or for some of the application. By the way, I want to remind that open a port to the internet is very risky and you can expose your whole network to the internet. So, so please do further research before open a port and you need to know what are the port number, the protocol, TCP, UDP, ICMP, and all the protocol. So you need to have an idea on what you are doing. If you are just copy a tutorial on the internet and do the same on your router, you are putting your router in the risk situation so that's it thanks for watching if there are any questions please put in the video comment sections and we will try to find a solution for that or you can always put it in the rock van touch corner and friends and if you like press the like button if you don't like hit the thumb down and tell me the reason to improve it thanks for watching i will be see you in the next video bye bye